Praise the Lord, everyone. As we welcome you once again to the Reaching Out program. We greet you in the name of the Lord Jesus as we praise the Lord in his holy name. Uh, we ask today that you uh, join us, worship the Lord in the, as, as we worship and serve the Lord in the beauty of holiness. This telecast in its entirety is broadcast from the Greater Emmanuel Apostolic Temple at 1150 West Galbraith Road in the city of Cincinnati. Our pastor is the Honorable Bishop Paul Alexander Bowers, who is also the Diocesan Bishop for the State of Ohio and the Pentecostal Assemblies of the World. And we greet you once again as we welcome you to the Reaching Out program. As the passage of Scripture, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. We welcome you today, and I am the program's host, Elder Rudy Roussel. Please let us pray. Kind Father in heaven, we thank you and praise you, Lord, for your grace, for your mercy, for your love and kindness. We thank you, Lord, for just allowing us another opportunity to humbly come before your divine presence. Lord, we pray in a special way today that you bless every viewer of this. Yes. Let something be done or said in word or in deed that would encourage those who are lost to continue to seek the light of your salvation. We pray today, Lord, that you prick hearts that men might be saved. We know, Lord, that you suffer no man to be lost, Lord. Father, we know that you died that we might have life and have life more abundantly. We ask, Lord, that your presence be felt in this service today. Unctionize your servant, Lord, as we attempt to glorify you. Heavenly Father, in your word, you say, Thy word, O Lord, have I hid in mine heart that I might not sin against thee. Father, we thank you for all that you've done and for what you're about to do in the lives of these viewers. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I would ask those of you that have your Bibles handed today, and I trust that you do, uh, if you would turn with me to the book of 2 Chronicles, uh, chapter number 7. On our last telecast, we went over some things that we uh, discussed from the word of the Lord. And for a brief moment, we'd like where we left off. I'll read for you verses 1 through 3, and then verses 11 and 12, here in this great chapter, chapter 7. And it reads... Now Solomon had made an end of praying, the fire came down from heaven and consumed the burnt offering and the sacrifices, and the glory of the Lord filled the house. And the priest could not enter into the house of the Lord because the glory of the Lord had filled the Lord's house. And when all the children of Israel saw how the fire had came down and the glory of the Lord upon the house, themselves with their faces to the ground upon the pavement and worshiped and praised the Lord saying, for he is good and his mercy endureth forever. Thus Solomon the house of the Lord and the king's house, and all that came into Solomon's heart to make in the house of the Lord, and in his own house he prosperously effected. And the Lord appeared to Solomon and said unto him, I have heard thy prayer and have chosen this place to myself for an house of sacrifice. And the thought comes this morning in the very first verse of this chapter. Now when Solomon had made an end of praying, the fire came down from heaven and consumed the burnt offering and the sacrifices. And the thought, and it says, and the glory of the Lord filled the house. And the thought is in God's house. We have a, a, a the Bible says a house not built of, of stone, and that's in, in Christ Jesus. We have everything that we need is in Jesus. It says here this morning that the burnt uh, offering, and the, uh, it talks about the, cons the burnt offerings being consumed and the sacrifice being consumed, and that the fire from, uh, had came down from heaven. Solomon had made an end of praying. See, sometimes when you get in the presence of God, you, you know, you don't, you're not concerned about what those things that go on around you. Your main concern is making sure that the Lord is attentive and he hears prayer and supplication that you're, you're making unto him. Your concern is to whether or not you're able to get a prayer off of the ground, off the runway. Because when you start bombarding heaven with prayer God has to answer if you're walking upright before, if you're worshiping and serving God in the beauty of holiness God has 
an obligation to his people to answer their prayer. The scripture encourages us that the Lord already knows us even before we ask. He said he only hears the prayers of the righteous or sinners as they repent. Or those looking to repent. Or those desiring to repent. Or those that have been pricked hearts. God hears those prayers. He says, but he told the priest, the priest was saying that uh, uh, the presence of the Lord, uh, that they couldn't enter it because the presence of the Lord had filled the house. And they're saying that the glory of, of, of the, they praised him as they laid the, down, down on the, the, the pavement. It says that the people uh, had bowed down uh, on the ground and on the pavement and they worshiped the Lord and they praised the Lord and they said that the, uh, that the Lord is good and his mercy endureth forever. It is the mercy that, uh, that God has bestowed upon us that, that keeps us. It is God's mercies. The Bible said that his is endured forever. So when God, you are asking God to have mercy on your soul, when you're asking God to have mercy in a certain situation, then God hears your prayer. He understands that because of mercy that he has occasion to answer you. If God had dealt out justice in every situation as opposed to having mercy, none of us would be here today. But thank God for his love and his compassion, his kindness, and his dedication to the people of God. God has made promises to us. The scripture says, what shall I render unto the Lord for his benefits? You know, we can't give God anything. God already owns everything. Whatever we petition God for, we just ask God to help us. We just ask God to lead us and to guide us, to give us knowledge and spiritual wisdom and understanding of his word so that we might govern our lives in accordance to the word. Here it tells you in in in, in uh, uh Verse 11, it says that, and the Lord, and Solomon had finished the house of the Lord and the king's house. He had finished building God's house where the presence and the power was going to be felt in his dedication, in his dedication prayer. And that's what this is about, how he dedicated this house unto the Lord. Just like we should dedicate this house, this spiritual house, to the Lord because the spirit and the presence power of God abides in us. Those of us that are baptized in the name of Jesus. Those of us that are filled with the precious gift of the Holy Ghost to speak spirit and the presence and the power of God abide in this house in us now he is telling them he said that uh, Solomon's heart was to make in the house of the Lord and his own house prosperously effectively see if you help God uh, if you help his house God will help you in your house and the help you need in your house is to get your lifestyle in order and to govern your family in accordance to the word in accordance to the word of God so that you can effectively be in your own homes and not a lot of times it's, uh, prosperity as we know it is not always related to money but it's related to the spiritual things of God we can prosper greater with the spiritual rewards and the spiritual riches of God. But Solomon had prepared the house for the Lord. And the Lord said, told Solomon, he said, and the Lord appeared to Solomon by night. And he said unto him, I have heard thy prayer, chosen this place to myself for an house of sacrifice. So the Lord had already told Solomon, he said, I've heard your prayer and I've chosen this place for a house unto myself. They had traveled for years in the desert, in the desert, desert 40 years in the wilderness, building and setting up the tabernacle and taking it up and putting it down every time they moved. The presence and the power of God in the Ark of the Covenant, symbolic of God's presence with his people. But God has chosen this house of Solomon he had, that Solomon had built as a place for his presence to be with the children of Israel. And by today's standard, we have so many folks said everything you need ain't in the church. We place more stock and stuff and in things in our stock portfolio, in our finances, and in our credit cards. We've taken uh, 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 substance and, and we put them high above God. We'll serve the, cre the creature as, a, as rather than the creator. And we've allowed these things to happen in our life and all of the evidence of salvation we need is right here, confined in the book. Jesus, 
I come in the volume of the book. He said, search the scriptures in part because they speak of me. But if you need to find Jesus, if you need to know where the presence of God is, it's in the house of God. The Bible says, and the glory of the Lord fill the house. But you got to get to the house of God. You have to understand where your greatest needs are. If you need deliverance, house of God. If you need a healing, it's in the house of God. If you need to hear the preach word, it's in the house of God. If you need to learn, if you need to understand the th God, it's in the house of God. But folks are telling you, you don't have to go to the house because the, to the house of God because, the, because you are the church. It's not necessary to do that. If I walk upright before the Lord, if I live life, if I do this, if, if I'm a pillar of my community, if I don't bother anybody, if I pay my taxes, if I pay my tithes, I, I, I'm going to be all right. I don't have to go to church. Not so. That is not so. God is not concerned about your money, your substance. Although these things are important, God is more concerned about your soul. He tells us about forsaking this, the gathering of ourselves together. We have to worship and serve the Lord in the beauty of holiness. But yet society is telling us other things. Society is taking Jesus a thing. No longer are we permitted to worship and to serve the Lord in the beauty of holiness. They tell you you can't do certain things in public because you, you're, you're becoming religiously offensive to those who don't want to hear it. Some people think that you're in violation of institutional rights because you do these things. But yet, and still, it tells us Solomon at the end of his prayer, he said, fire came down from heaven. And that fire is representative of the presence and the power of, it's representative of Jesus. It's representative of the spirit in the church. It is a representative of the Holy Ghost. John him said, self said, that one come after me whose shoes I'm not worthy to latch. He said, he'll baptize with fire and the Holy And yet it says that fire came down from heaven. It said the people saw the fire come down from heaven and they immediately stopped worshiping and praising God upon the pavement. They immediately did this. They said the presence and the power of God was so strong in their house that even the priest could not enter it. Who wouldn't want to be in the presence of God? When you're in the presence of God, you're not concerned about the things that are going on around you. You're more apt to be tuned with God. The Bible said that they that worship the Lord must worship in spirit and in truth. And the perversion that exists today is that they're taking the word of God and they're adding to it and they're taking from it and they're encouraging people not to do the things that the Lord has set up for us to do. He said, if you love me, keep my commandments. That simple. If you love me, keep my obedience is the key to salvation. You have to trust and obey God. You have to believe that God is who he is and he can do and, and, and perform the things that he says he can and will do in his word for those of us believe. Jesus himself said, let not your heart be troubled. If you believe in God, believe also in me. But the problem is we're trying to distort the belief. We're trying to pervert our belief and our hope and our trust in God today. 1,300 or better known religions, known gods in this world. And yet we serve the one and only true and living God. And men are trying to persuade us that we don't have to do that in order to be saved. Say, no, you don't have to be baptized. You don't have to be the spirit of God. All you got to do is believe and live a good life and be a good person. Well, the scriptures doesn't say that. The scripture said that we had to be born again. The Bible says that Nicodemus came to Jesus by and said, Jesus himself told him without the new birth process, he'll not enter the kingdom and he will not even see it. But yet, we don't get to the house of God. We don't get to the church. We don't get to the temple or the tabernacle. We can learn and understand the principles and the ordinances of God. 
Because folks will tell you, you don't have to do that. Not necessary anymore. We're taking God off of our money. We're taking God out of the courtroom. We're taking him out of the schools. We're taking existence out of God from every place. Not so, because it's in our heart. Paul himself said, in him we live and move and have our very being. It's the presence and the power of God abides in us. Take that away from us. Those that believe, those that trust in the Lord, those of us that know that when we get to the house of the Lord, that the glory and the presence and the power of God is filling the house. The turning away in the last days is not from church. It is not from religion. It is from the truth. And the Bible says they that worship the Lord must worship in spirit and in truth. God is a spirit. God is about holiness. God is about righteousness. And it is the Holy Ghost that impute these things in us. He said, and the fire came down from heaven and consumed the burnt offering and the sacrifice and the glory of the Lord filled the house. The very place you can get help, they're persuading you not. The very place that you can get a healing, they're, they're trying to persuade you not to go. The very place you can go where God will restore your family, your finances, your money, your job. It's in the house of God because that's where the present lies. We look to other things for satisfaction, temporary relief. We go to barrooms and nightclubs thinking that if we drink ourselves into, into a drunken stupor that everything will be all right in the morning. Most of the times it becomes worse because we're not looking to where the source of our help and our strength comes from. We'll turn to other men. We'll turn to other women. And we'll look and we'll try and confine in people, asking people. We're, we're pouring out our problems to folks that are not even capable of handling their own business, let alone yours. And we're looking to them for advice in situations where it would be so much easier to give it over to God, to over to God. He said, I've heard your prayer. He told Solomon, I heard your prayer. When Daniel was in the, uh, uh, in the, in the Hebrew boys, he said that Daniel prayed, prayed for 21 days. The angel Lord told Daniel, he heard you the very first time. God knows your needs. He heard you the very first time. And some of us believe because God does not answer when we think he should answer. No, God. And some of us think that because God does not come when we say he should come, that there is no God. God does not work on your timetable. God defies time, eternity, logic, reason. He defies all of those things, and he does things when his time is he's concerned. It's the best time to do things or to show his mighty hand or his mighty acts or his mighty works. It's when he says so. And only then, at the completion of the house that Solomon built, he said, I heard your prayer, and I've chosen this house for a house of sacrifice. Scripture says, and the glory of the Lord fit the house. He said, the people worship the Lord because of Solomon's prayer, because they saw the fire come down from heaven. He said they worship him. They bow down on the pavement and they worship. And they said he is good and his mercy endures forever. For he is good and his mercies endure forever. Outside the body of Christ, nobody's going to be merciful to you. Nobody's not going to give you nothing outside in the world. Eat dog. And everybody's trying to get that dog on top. Struggles in the corporate world. Everybody wants to climb up the corporate ladder. They want to get to the top. They want to be all they can be. In the body of Christ, all God asks you is to come as you are. And he'll clean you up. And he'll help you to get where you need to be in heavenly places. This world's going to pass away and all of the substance and that you've acquired in this life going to be left behind for somebody else to enjoy. So for those of us that worship and serve the Lord in the beauty of holiness, we know where our treasure lies. And it's not in these earthen vessels. It's in Jesus. It's in Jesus. It's in Jesus. 
The very one that we tried to discredit, the very one we tried to take out of everything, the very person that we try to take out of every situation, our lies in Jesus. All we need to do is pray. Get down on our knees. Ask the Lord. Lord, I'm weak. Lord, I'm puny. Lord, I'm pathetic. But I know that the glory of the Lord will house of God. So I need to get to the house of God. I need to get to the, my source of my strength. I need to get to the source of my help. I need to get to the source of my deliverance. Because the presence and the power of God and the glory of the Lord fills the house. We need to get to the house of God. We understand those things that are going on in the world. But we need to understand the things that are going on in the bride. He said, I died for you that you might have life and have life more abundantly. Folks don't even know who Jesus is. They know of him. They know that he's Mary's baby. They know that Joe was a carpenter. They know all of these things. That Jesus had brothers that he made disciples. They understand these things, but they do not have a relationship. They do not have an up close and personal relationship with Jesus. So when they get down on their knees, the prayers just bounce off the ceiling because they don't have a, a working relationship with God. And that's why they're in so much trouble. And that's why things don't seem to go right for them. Because they're not worshiping and serving the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Folks are pretending to be church. Look like saints. Walk like saints. Like saints. But deep down inside, God knows the contents of their hearts. We have to put on the mind of Christ. The Bible says, let this mind be in you that is also in Christ Jesus. We have to be partakers of the divine nature of Christ. He said the fire came down from heaven and consumed the burnt offering and the sacrifice. John had come after me, whose shoes ain't worthy to last, said he'll baptize with fire and with the Holy Ghost. Jesus said, I, I, I'll send the comforter. I'll pray the Father that he sends the comforter. He said he'll lead you and guide you in all righteousness and in all truth. And then Peter gets up on the day of Pentecost and he preaches the first sermon in the New Testament church. He said, repent, every one of you, in the name of the Lord Jesus. He said, repent, be baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus for the remission of sins. He said, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost or the presence or the power of God will then abide in you. And if you read that scripture very thoroughly towards the end of it and said 3,000 souls were saved, that were added to the church daily. But yet you have people that tell you today to say this sinner's prayer and can believe in your heart and confess with your mouth and all these other things. And they said, and then you shall be saved. You receive the right hand of fellowship and you become a card carrying of some church and some organization. You be baptized in water and all you do is come up a wet sinner. Because you've not been baptized in his name. Because you've not been baptized into the Holy Ghost. We have to get this thing right. Because the presence and the power of God is in the church. We should be encouraging people to get to the church. In the church is where our help comes from. Today or tomorrow, this, we, 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 we've been bombarded by terrorists. And if it, if it reached an epidemic proportion and we had to worry about foreign enemies coming to this country, you encourage them to get to a safe place to avoid the effects of war. And I'm encouraging you today to avoid the effects of spiritual warfare. You need to get to the house, get to the place of, get to the place of comfort, get to the place of deliverance. God has already done the work. He was the ultimate in sacrifices. He died so that we might have life and have it more abundantly. Without the shedding of blood, there will be no remission for sins. And sin is our greatest enemy. But he said, I've chosen this house for a house of sacrifice. But at the end of Solomon's prayer, fire come down from heaven. Consume the burnt offering and the sacrifices and the glory of the Lord fill the house. You need to get to the place of safety. You get back in the ark of covenant. You need to get into the ark of safety. Become a part of the covenant of God. Be recipients of the promises of eternal life. God bless you today.
May the Lord God continue you and keep you. Our Sunday school starts at promptly 1045 a.m. And our church is Greater Emmanuel Apostolic Temple at 1150 West Galbraith Road here in the city of Cincinnati. This program is televised in its entirety from Greater Emmanuel, where our pastor is Bishop Paul Alexander Bowers. Uh, we have a Sunday night service that starts promptly at 7 o'clock. And on Monday nights, we have brotherhood and sisterhood prayer that starts promptly at 7 o'clock and at 8 o'clock is a receiving service. Wednesday night, we have youth and young adult Bible class as well as adult Bible class taught by our pastor. Come be a part of this. Come feel the glory and the power and the presence of God as it house. May God bless you and may God keep you.